Hey guys, today we're going to be filming a new colour grading tutorial on the artist Aaron Ball. Uh, we're going to be teaching how you can colour grade your photos in a very similar style to this artist. Um, so if you don't know who he is, go ahead and check him out on Instagram. You can see all of his uh, photos here. Okay, so specifically today we're going to be focusing on one of uh, these photos. So this photo here is the one we're going to be focusing on. Um, and just to show you, this is what the colour grade looks like. So we're going to be taking the image from this to this. Um, and now I have gone ahead and put together a preset pack. Currently there are only six presets, but I'm going to aim to put about 15 to 20 presets presets in this Aaron Ball style preset pack so you can go ahead and purchase that from the link in the description. Um, I'm going to show you some examples as well of what the other ones look like but before I do that I wanted to mention really quickly if you go ahead and click on the top link in the description you can go ahead and purchase our whole shop Lightroom presets pack which includes over 300 actually probably about 400 plus presets in there now. Um, it includes over 75 Photoshop actions and a mini Photoshop course with about 1,000 plus overlays. Uh, go ahead and check that out. The link will be the top, top link in the description. Um, and you can see it here. It gives you examples of what all the presets do in there. There are loads and loads of examples. So go ahead, check that out if you are interested or just shoot us a message as well on Instagram if you have any questions. Okay, so Aaron Ball has got a very uh, sort of specific kind of style, but his photos do vary very slightly. Um, he has this sort of style where he decreases the saturation in the blues and then everything else kind of balances out. And I'm going to show you some examples today of what these presets do. So this is the, um, the fourth preset in the pack where it takes a photo to look like this from that. Okay, this photo is, um, okay, so this is the before and this is the after of another photo. I wanted to style this one very similar to this photo here. So you can see what I've done is I've gone through the um, Aaron Ball's photos, I've gone through and I've chosen photos that look similar and I've created presets for each one of those. So that's another example there. This is just another example. This one I think uh, needs a little bit more work on this one, but it's kind of one of his more warmer kind of desert looks. It goes from that to that as well. So that's it for the presets. I'm going to show you here now how you can take the photo from something like this, just a normal photo, and you can take it to this specific style. And we're going to start straight from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to start off just with the basics panel like we usually do. Now I'm going to be uh, I'm going to save the most important thing for the last, and that is the camera calibration. So if you want to know how to actually kind of really take this photo to the final steps, you have to wait until the end of the video. I'm going to leave that right at the end so go ahead and check that out when you get there don't skip through just wait until we get there because there's lots of information packed through out this video and I may if I get time jump into another kind of uh, one of these presets just to show you how to do it in a different style so hold on for that so first of all we're going to start off with the basics panel and like we always do we're going to start off with the white balance um, and first of all I like to um, if you look at his photos he actually does tend to warm them up a bit uh, warm them up a bit now the way I kind of tell this is just look at the uh, highlights here you can see the highlights are like a sort of more yellow, more orangey colour. So we're going to do that today just by dragging up the temperature slider and I'm going to put it up to about 7000 or 8000 Kelvin. This will depend dramatically on your image. Um, so don't do the exact same numbers but you will find that you'll probably want to boost the temperature as well. Now actually if you look at his photos in a little bit of detail you will see a lot of his photos are slightly green in a tint sort of um, colour. If you have a look uh, in a bit more detail there is actually a sort of underlying green tint in there so what we're going to do is we're going to come onto the tint side and we're just going to drop that to minus eight just to add a little bit of green in there now the first thing that comes to mind with this image is it's incredibly underexposed so what i've done is i've just boosted the uh, exposure value all the way up to about plus one plus one point two basically just to really bring back the detail in this image and then we're going to work on the shadows in just a minute Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just jump straight into the shadows and I'm going to boost those up to about plus 100. So this uh, preset that is in the preset pack will be very bright for certain images. So if you do get this preset pack, which will be linked in the description, like I mentioned, you may need to adjust the exposure on the images because some of the images I'm making these presets from are more underexposed just to save the detail in those shadows. Next thing we're going to do is just drop the highlights completely to minus 100. Uh, we can do that in this image because there's a lot of detail, a lot of information in the highlights. Uh, you may find that your highlights don't actually have as much information in, which means if you decrease it all the way to minus 100, you do actually kind of get this like weird grayed out clouds. So just decrease it to the point where you can get as much detail back without actually making the image look slightly weird. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on putting some contrast in the image. If you look at his photos, he does have very contrasty photos. So with this one, we're going to do that by increasing the whites just to about plus 40, maybe plus 50 halfway. Um, and that's just gonna lighten up those clouds. It's going to sort of brighten up the image a little bit more without actually kind of doing it within the highlights. 
uh, it kind of keeps the highlights while brightening up the image at the same time, which is why I'm doing it in the whites and not the highlights. As for the blacks, we're just going to crush those blacks down to about minus 13, minus 15, just to make that image that slightly bit more contrasty. Okay, one thing else that I noticed while spending hours kind of working through his photos was his photos have a lot of clarity in. I'll try and show you some more examples here. Um, so you can kind of see if you look through his photos, his photos have a lot of clarity. This one's a really good example to see clarity and so is this one. Um, and basically if you don't know what clarity is, that's basically kind of like a contrast slider, um, but it kind of goes and makes it very sharp as well. So to do clarity, we're just going to come down here and we're going to boost that to about plus 35%, plus 40, somewhere like that. You don't want to go too high that the image looks a bit weird, but we do want to add quite a bit of clarity in there. Now the next thing, you want to decrease the saturation or the vibrance. In this case, I'm going to be working on the vibrance slider and not the saturation slider, um, just because I'm going to be working on the saturation within the hue, saturation and luminance sliders in just a minute. So first of all, we're going to come to the vibrance and we're going to drop that down to about plus 20, plus 30. And already we're beginning to get that sort of desaturated look that he has. You can kind of see here, if I click back on the image that we're basing it on, already we're beginning to get that desaturated look, those slightly green tints and the warmer colours within the image. But we're not quite done yet. If I just show you a quick before and after, you can see how far we've come with just the basics panel. Now obviously a lot of the change is with the exposures, but we have actually changed quite a bit just using the temperature slider and we're kind of getting there already. So we're going to close up the basics panel now and we're just going to move on to the tone curve. Now, again with the tone curve, this is going to be um, slightly different to all of our other videos. If you look at through most people's edits and most of our older videos, people will be doing an S curve. Um, and an S curve basically introduced yet more contrast into the image. Uh, in this case, we're going to be doing a slight S curve, but mostly we're just going to be working on the highlights. So we're going to boost the highlights here just a little bit above the dotted line. Um, if you're not on this part of the tone curve, just click on this button here to come from this one just to this one, just because it's kind of slightly easier to work with. We're going to just drag down the highlights here just a little bit, just to kind of save some of the um, detail in the highlights, just to darken those highlights a tiny bit more, while at the same time we are sort of brightening up the brighter highlights, if that makes sense. Um, then down at the shadows, we're just going to kind of drop it off ever so slightly just to make the shadows a bit darker, somewhere like that. It's very, um, it's, it's very sort of subtle sort of change and all I was doing is just looking around, flicking between the image and just working out exactly where to put those points. And that's probably what you want to do for your images, just really work out exactly where you want to put those points. Okay, so this is the final most important part within the tone curve. If you look at some of his images, again, if I go on to here, you can see this one's a really good example to see where he does it. He does actually introduce some fade into his images. Uh, if you don't know what fade is, that's basically where it kind of makes his shadows slightly more grey or the whites slightly more grey. And I'm going to show you how you do that now. So you, all you do is you get this bottom point here and you just drag it up a little bit. So if you see if I drag it up like this, we kind of get a lot of fade included. Now he doesn't have too much fade, so we're only going to drag it up ever so slightly to about here. Uh, then we're going to do the same in the highlights, but we're actually going to drag it down this time. We're going to drag it down to about there, and that kind of fades out the highlights there. So if I just do a quick before and after, that's a quick comparison of what you can expect just by doing that tone curve. So that's it for the tone curve. We're now going to move on to the HSL slider. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the video, if you are interested, you can get all of the presets. That's like Aaron Ball style, Alan Palander style, uh, Short Stash style, uh, Brown and Woeful style, all of those presets in one bundle. Um, that's the whole shot pack. Go and check that out now on the website. That's the top link in the description. Um, but now we're going to move on to the hue slider where we're going to just start working on the reds and the oranges mainly because that's where a lot of his image is based within the reds, oranges and yellows and greens. So we're going to work first of all with the reds and I found with this particular image if I dropped it to about minus 100, minus 90 it works the best. Um, there isn't actually too much red in this specific image but when you have uh, images with a bit of red that's what I tend to do. Just drop that to about minus 88 and some of these different presets will have different values for that red just to kind of cater for different looks. Okay, the orange slider actually drops to about minus 25. Um, I think if you drag it to the right, it kind of makes it a little bit too green. I know he does have some green in his images like you can see here, um, but I think if we drag it to the right, it actually goes too green. So what I'm doing is I'm saving some of those oranges, putting some of that back in the image after we've adjusted the tint slider earlier, just to very subtly add a little bit more green. So we're going to drop that to about minus 22, uh, minus 25. Somewhere around there is a good starting point. Now for the yellows, I'm actually going to leave the yellows where they are. You see if I drag them to the left, it makes things very pink. If I drag them to the right, it makes them more green. Um, now because what we're going to be doing later on in the camera calibration, we don't actually need to be messing around with the yellows too much because we're going to be adding some kind of cool look with the camera calibration right at the end of this video. So now we're going to move on to the greens. Um, and he tends to have that sort of more vibrant bluey green in his photos, especially if you look at some of his like... Uh, Norway ones, which I'll try and find, or oh, this one for example, if you look at the grass, we're kind of going for that kind of green there. 
And the way you achieve that is by basically increasing the green side to the right hand side. So that's what we'll be doing with this one. Because there's not much green in the image, it doesn't matter too much. You can actually, if you want to, go further to about plus 45. Um, that's probably perfectly fine. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is working on the sky of his images. Now, in this specific image, there isn't actually much blue in the sky. It's very desaturated. But if you look at some of his other ones, like this one, for example, you can actually see that the sky is a more teal color. He hasn't actually left it uh, blue. So we're going to work on that now. First of all, we're going to jump into the aqua slider. And we're actually going to boost the aquas to the right a bit to about plus 50%. And that's going to save some of those blues. If you drag it all the way to the right, it kind of makes it more purple. So we're going to basically drag the aqua slider up to about plus 50. And that's going to keep some of the purpley blues within the image. But the majority of the edit is going to be done within the blue slider, where we're actually going to make some of those blues more um, uh, teal. So we're going to drag the blue slider now down to about minus 35, minus 40. And you can see, if I drag it all the way to the left, we get a far too tealy kind of blue. We kind of want to go halfway between, um, so about minus 40, minus 35 is a good place to sit with that. Now, this one you can't really see too much, but the reason I dragged the aquas to the right is, well, I'll show you, if I drag the aquas all the way to the left, you kind of get, again, too much teal in that image. It just allows you to do finer adjustments by taking out some of those aquas and boosting it up in the, uh, the right-hand side there. Now, for the uh, purples and magentas, we're just going to leave those alone because there aren't really many purples and uh, magentas within this image. So we'll just close that up now and move on to the saturation. Now, saturation is my favorite part with this whole edit because you can really see where it actually comes from, um, sort of a normal kind of edit all the way up to this kind of really desaturated edit here. So if I show you the before and after now, you can see just how far we've come. We are actually kind of getting almost towards his edit. The colors are getting right. Now we just need to work on the uh, sort of luminance and the saturation. So we're going to work on that now. We're going to come to the reds and we're going to decrease the reds to about minus 15. And that's just going to take out some of that reds in the rock in the foreground and also in the background. We don't want too much of that in the image. Like I said, if you look at all of his images, they are all quite desaturated. Um, one thing I will mention now is if you have got a photo with like a um, specific contrasty um, object, so for example here you've got that red car, he actually doesn't take out too much of that color. So if you have a focus of the image, say for example here the car or here the bike, um, if that object has a specific color, don't desaturate that color all the way down to about minus 50, minus 60. Only take off about 20% because that's the main focus of the image. You want to keep that in if you want to follow his style. But for this case, because we don't have that, we're actually just going to drop it down to about minus 50 at the moment. There aren't many reds, so we're going to leave that there. Now the oranges, again, same principle. We're going to drop that down to about minus 30 just to take out some of those um, the saturation in the foreground. The yellows, we're going to leave at zero, like I said before. We don't want to take it out too much, otherwise the image is just going to go completely black and white because the image is predominantly yellow. Now for the greens, his greens actually tend to be slightly more oversaturated. And like I showed you in that previous image um, up here with the grass, the green is actually slightly more saturated. So we're going to drag that slider to the right, uh, plus 22, sorry, about plus 30 is a fairly good point for that as well. Now for the aqua slider, I'm going to do again the same principle as what we did in the uh, hue slider. I'm going to increase the aquas and decrease the blues, which basically gives me more control over what the blue slider does because the blue is a very powerful color in these images. So we're going to increase the aquas all the way up to about plus 50, plus 60. Uh, and then the blues, we're going to decrease quite a bit down to about minus 40. And what, or minus 50 in this case, I think would look quite nice. So what that's going to do is it's really going to adjust the sky. So if I just were to drag the aquas down again, you can see we can actually make the sky a little bit too easily um, desaturated. Now I'm going to leave that aquas there um, just because it kind of doesn't make too much difference in this image. But for a lot of images, uh, if you have a very blue sky, you want to be doing that where you have an increase in the aquas and a decrease in the blues. So probably leave it at about plus 50. And the purples and magentas, we're just going to leave at zero because they don't really affect the image too much. Finally, we're going to move on to the luminance slider. And the luminance slider is, if you don't know, it's going to increase the uh, exposure of each individual color. So we're going to be working on the reds now. Uh, and we want to brighten up those foreground colors. So we're going to drag that up to plus 50. The oranges, we're actually going to decrease. And this is just going to add like a, a tiny bit of color contrast into the image. So we're going to decrease that to about minus 35. Um, as for the yellows, because that is a lot of the foreground, and I'm beginning to think the foreground is a little bit too dark. If you look at his image here, the foreground, the sort of like uh, the sand, is a much brighter color. So we're going to get the yellows, and we're going to increase that more um, to plus 45, 
around there and that's just kind of really lighting up the foreground and now your eyes are drawn to this central rock as opposed to the sky. Okay, the greens, I'm just going to leave the greens where they are for this specific image. You can, if you want to, increase those or decrease those depending on how, what sort of like brightness it is within the image. But in this case, there's really no green, so I'm just gonna, it doesn't really matter what I do with it. Um, now, the aquas, um, if you look at the sky here, um, it is very desaturated. It is slightly uh, tealy blue, but it's also actually quite dark. If you think about how light a sky should be, he has actually dropped off the... Um, exposure of that color in the sky. So we're going to get the aquas, we're going to drop that to minus 100 and we're going to get the blues and we're going to drop that to about minus 50 there. Okay so now we're going to move on to the split toning part of the image and what we're going to do here is we're going to choose specific colors that we can add to the highlights or specific colors we can add to the shadows uh, and the best way of doing this is by pressing option or alt on your keyboard and dragging the slider along where you can really see what color you're going to add to those highlights. Um, in his case, we're going to go for around 65 in the highlights, and if I just press Option or Alt again, you can see that adds that sort of slightly green, slightly yellow look that we were mentioning right at the beginning of the video. He has a slightly green tint to his images, so that's how we're going to achieve that look. And in the shadows, we're going to go for about 230, uh, and what that's going to do is add some sort of blues slash purples into his shadows, which is hard to see in this image, but if you go through some of his other images, say for example this one here or this one here, you can actually see he has sort of like a purpley magenta bluey look in the shadows, especially down here if you look here and here. So that's what we've kind of done there with the shadows. Now for the saturation, we don't want to add too much. So in the highlights, probably around 3% in the saturation, and the shadows, I'm thinking about 10% just there. I don't want to be doing too much, but enough that it makes a difference. If I turn that off and on again, you can see it has an interesting effect on in the image. You still have the original colors we worked with earlier, but you actually kind of add a very subtle tone to the whole image, which is quite effective if you work on it correctly. So for the detail, his images doesn't really matter. He tends to have fairly sharp images, but I would tend to leave the sharpness around 25, leave everything else where it is, unless your image is quite noisy, uh, maybe add about 5% noise reduction, but not too much, because he actually, if you have a look in some of his images, has some grain. So uh, I think this one's a good example. Yeah, you can see a little bit of grain there. Um, some of his images have quite a bit of grain, some have less. It really depends. This one, for example, he has an, a, a lot of grain in his images. So the way we're going to achieve that is we're going to come to this uh, slider here. And in this one, I think I'm going to work on about plus 70 grain. I'm just going to show you how you can put like a lot of grain in your images. So 70, 75 grain. Um, and then we're going to leave the size at 25 and the roughness at 50. You can increase the size if you want just to make it a little bit more obvious. But I don't think that's a, uh, I think probably about 25. Um, so that's how you can add some sort of texture to your image using the grain. Um, quite a fun thing to do. Mess around with that and see what happens. Okay, we're finally there. This is camera calibration. Um, this is the part that's really going to bring the image to life. Um, and it kind of gets neglected quite often. So in lots of previous videos, you may have seen a lot of artists use that very basic uh, teal and orange color grade where you kind of in increase the reds and decrease the blues and you get a teal and orange. In this case, it's not working because of stuff we've done in the HSL before, um, but that's the kind of look you would get. Now with Aaron Ball, he actually has a very different sort of style going on. So we're going to work on about 20 in the reds. I'll show you the numbers first and then I'll explain it afterwards. Um, the blues we're going to actually increase to about, I don't know, eight I think it is. He definitely increases the blues ever so slightly and you can see what happens there. As soon as I increase the blues, it makes that image more green. So if do keep the blues, makes it purple, increase, makes it green. So that's why we add it to about uh, seven. That's making the image ever so slightly more green. Uh, if I drop the reds, it makes it sort of purple. If I increase it, it makes it sort of yellowy green again. So you can really see why we're doing this. It's kind of adding in those more green tones that I mentioned earlier in the image. Uh, sorry, earlier in the video. Now, finally, with the green primary, we're going to leave at zero, but we are going to decrease the saturation of the green primary to about minus 40 because we've introduced some greens, but we don't want to add too much. So we're going to take back some of that, decrease the saturation in those greens, but we've still got the underlying tones of green in the image. As for everything else, we're going to leave at zero. The saturation in the blues, I might actually increase to about plus 6%. And that is it. That's the overall color grade. I'm going to show you a couple of things now, a couple of like added extras, just to show you how you can kind of take these images from here to a little bit further. Um, so if I show you the uh, image we worked from, this is the one we took the example from, and this is the uh, edit we took. Now, this is slightly different to the one I showed you right at the beginning. I think the one I showed you right at the beginning looked something like this. Um, Slightly more saturated, um, but obviously I'm not going to get it exactly the same every single time. Okay, so the final thing that I'm going to mention now, and if you're really doing these photos, I suggest you do this in Photoshop. It just is a little bit easier. But if you don't have Photoshop, you can kind of do it to a certain extent in Lightroom. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on adding this kind of um, 
light coming on here, so like the sunlight from one hand, uh, one side of the image uh, flare. So we can add a bit of a flare using the um, radial tool here, and we're just going to drag out a sort of fairly large circle, sort of more horizontally like that. Uh, if it does scroll down, down to a feather, and we're just going to invert the mask there. Uh, and I'm just going to boost the feathering all the way up to plus 100. And what that's going to do is, well, I'll show you the opposite, kind of self-explanatory. Uh, it feathers out the edges so it kind of blends in a little bit, uh, little bit more. So now we're going to reset that down to zero. And we're just going to work on a few things. We're going to try and brighten it up. We're going to try and add some orange and then like a little bit of haze into the image as well. So first of all, we're going to work on the exposure. Just boost up the exposure a little bit to about plus 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it kind of depends on your image. As long as it's not too bright, if you go too bright, it's ridiculously obvious that you've done this. So about plus 0.5, you kind of can't go too wrong. Then the temperature, we're gonna add a little bit of orange, not too much, uh, about plus 16, plus 15, just to add that kind of tint that there is a little bit of orange in there, but you don't wanna to go too far. And then you just mess around really with the uh, other one. So clarity, I'm gonna take the clarity down, um, and then I'm going to add, well, have a look at the dehaze tool. So if I introduce dehaze to the left, you can kind of see it, what it does. It makes the image slightly more hazy, like that kind of look as if you've got um, a sort of sun flare coming on from one side. So that's what we're going to be doing, just a tiny bit of dehaze, decrease the clarity, and then you can, if you want to kind of boost the highlights, boost the shadows, um, you can kind of increase the saturation, anything like that. And then let's say that's what we're doing. That's not perfect, but let's say that's where we're going to leave it, um, just because I ought to wrap this video up now. Uh, if I move that then off a little bit, because we put some feather on, you don't need the center of that radial tool within the image. You can just kind of move it in and around to kind of get a very slight look going on there. So if I show you what it looks like before having that on, it looks like that. And then if I turn it on, you can kind of see there is some sort of sun effect coming from that side. So that I would, personally, I would do that within Photoshop. Um, and we do have in our whole shop light and preset pack, you, we do have uh, within the thousands of overlays, there is uh, a load of flares in there that you could use if you wanted to just to kind of get different effects and different looks. Um, now, uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build up this preset pack. I'm going to add uh, probably about 10 more presets to this pack. So you can go ahead, check that link in the description as soon as this video is published um, and go ahead, check out the whole shop pack. Now, if you have any ideas for future videos, don't forget to comment them down below. Let us know what you want to see. Um, it would be great if you would uh, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.